Good morning, everybody. Welcome into the shop. A work day today. Uh, yeah, some time ago, I think it was probably a year and a half ago, I was working on the HH Scott 222B amplifier, a legendary, valuable uh, amplifier. And um, unfortunately, one of the old can, one of the old um, can electrolytic capacitors, it's one of these tall silver towers, I'll tell you, circular round uh, towers that house multiple electrolytic capacitors in one, uh, in one can, so to speak. It's a, just a, a neat way to arrange it. And I guess it was too old and it ended up exploding here in the shop uh, terribly. So I'm going to attempt today to put some new parts in which have been received from the electronic supply house. And that's where you guys come in to be along. There's where the explosion occurred. Give me a look at the back side there. So we're going to have to try to cut these and lay in some new capacitors and then very carefully trace so we get the correct uh, correct connections on that. Once again, this is the area of uh, where the explosion occurred, right in here. Some of you may remember that uh, fateful day about a year and a half ago. Just to ref refresh your memory, I downloaded that bit of a clip. I remember Missy Jen came running. What happened? What happened? And the whole shop was uh, filled with smoke. Well, stuff happens. And then that day, my luck finally ran out. I'm not one to ever do much part changing unless I have to on a unit. But on that day, this unit, this uh, electrolytic can capacitor, chose to go out on me in a big way. Check it out. You can almost hear you can almost hear something bubbling down here. I'm not getting any output at all. I get a little slight crackle when I, uh, you know, I've got that source hooked up through there. I've got to turn to tuner here got it on stereo I got the volume up I'm gonna go over here if I hear any hum you can just hear the slightest crackle see <laughs> Am I all right? Look at me. <laughs> Look at this shop. Look at that. My goodness. That's what you get. When an old can capacitor blows up there without any warning at all. <laughs> Total and complete mayhem. Look at this shop. Everything is covered with goo. How do you like that, huh? Well, I guess we probably found what the uh, problem is with the unit. Some bad ca caps here, but you really never have any way. What happened? Had an old bad capacitor. I guess it uh, it shorted out. Better be careful 
out there. Yeah, well, I'm about wrapped up for the day, I can tell you that, guys. So, obviously, we're going to have to get the schematic. That's what happens. That's what happens when a capacitor blows. <laughs> This is the uh, area where the explosion occurred in, uh, they call that capacitor C1 down there, electrolytic meaning electrolytic capacitors. They're like little storage batteries that uh, take a charge and then release it in a synchronized manner. And uh, electric little, electrolytic ones uh, are designed so the electricity fly, uh, flows like a one-way street in one direction only. This is what the cans look like and this is what it actually exploded and see the remnants of it here i've cut out the old uh, part that was really uh, really a mess so it mounted down it mounted uh, like this down and the tall tabs there a couple of them are missing because they blew off good thing i had uh, eye protection on um, that's where the uh, capacitor uh, material was wrapped around them so uh, as you see, I've gone. I'm going to go ahead and cut the wire. I've already cut the wires to that, and I'm going to try to replace it. I have the Sam's bulletins here, which are great. The old service uh, manuals from the Howard Sam's company, and this is the one that details the layout on the bottom. Here is this one that covers all the resistors. In the unit, they give you a complete part list here of everything. That's all the electrolytic capacitors. So, so C, C1 had four values. Uh, they were all the same, 20, 20, 20, 20 over there and 450 working volts. Okay, and we have to make sure to align the positives and the negatives correctly. And then they give you... A working schematic or the electronic pathway here how everything uh, how everything moves through the unit and this is the particular area down here C1 C2 C3 each one of these little things 20 uh, microfarads represents one of the internal capacitors that was within a can like that so we're gonna try replacing them gone ahead and added uh, the uh, first one here I don't really have 20 microfarad but I'm going ahead and using a 22 which is close enough 450 volt rated I've got the correct positive side hooked up there you'll see I've used some insulating uh, shrink tube there because this is going to lay down inside of the uh, chassis here so it doesn't short out on anything else Got them pretty well all hooked together. All the negatives and the uh, positives are flowing to the right points in the unit. Now it's time to just make sure we got a good ground here. Now it's simply a matter of uh, reloading the tubes in here and giving it a shot. And this uh, tells you the uh, V's on here are the various values of the uh, tubes that go in in their location which is really nice one of the reasons i really love these sam's bulletins so i'm gonna go ahead i've got the rectifier tube in which converts ac to dc power v11 right there so i'm going to go ahead and continue putting the rest of the tubes in Okay, hey, I redid one of the uh, junctions on the negative. I didn't like the way it was uh, insulated. Had too much, uh, too much insulation hanging out. Ooh, that's hot. So I went ahead, I'm making sure all of the uh, positive leads are really covered. Well, I don't want any, uh, any possibility of anything shorting out particularly after doing all of this uh all of this work today so okay i think we should be almost good to go we just have to connect our ground strap here to the whole shebang and we will be good 
that's all done so it's time to get some tools put away and give ourselves a little bit of room we're going to need to replace the uh, fuse too because obviously that got taken out in the whole melee here so make sure we have room and we have to make very sure this probably saved my eyesight last time having having um, eye protection. I'm going to use the Variac 2 to slowly bring it up to um, operating voltage. That way I'll be able to see if anything uh, smokes or anything and turn that off real real quick before any, any damage can be done. Yeah, Kind of liking the look of that. Everything's tucked in pretty neatly there. So on with the show. All right, that's a good sign. We've kind of brought her up to, I'm trying to see what we got uh, here. I think we brought her up to, let me turn the light on for a minute. Yeah, we brought her up to about 120 volts here. And we don't have any explosions. All the tubes seem to be going. I have my eye protection on. So... You'll let things warm up a little bit, make sure uh, the things form in there before we uh, put a signal into it. How's that for a sweet sound coming through the tuner over here? All right, I don't want to get a copy right here. But we are back in business again. HH got 222B, rising from the dead. Wow, that is really a thing of beauty to see that roar back to life. So let's go ahead and tune up the dial here. Let's see what we get. Got a really good tuner here. Let's try to get a good signal. Nice balance. Cada día lunes a viernes 11 hasta la. Boy, this tuner is really sensitive. Session with all of them starting back remote learning. Spicy chicken combo. Stop by a Jack in the Box in help and childhood what good hunger news, once huh? and for all. Let's save this summer. Finally, right? yeah, with a Honda Safe Adventure. Really happy. The final days of been a long time since I've been able to do a repair. Too many other things. Going. Man, that sounds good. Here's Jeff Woodworth on the KSRO Weather Watch. Partly cloudy skies and wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour, giving us daytime highs in the low 80s, low 60s. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? When you can bring something back from just total explosive devastation to running nicely. There's still a lot of adjustments and things to be done to it. Also cosmetics to be done, something called DC offset and some other things. But that will be a topic for another video. But suffice to say, the 222B, the HH got, which is a renowned unit, the quality that Scott built uh, was incredible. These command high dollar. These is worth at least uh, $800. It has a, a beautiful faceplate to it. It hasn't been on in a year and a half. One of the smart things you've always do is remove your faceplate from, if you're going to work on it, but I would be very careful, as it says in the beginning, with um, tube units in particular, there's 450 and greater volts DC running around here. That can kill you. And, um, you know, there's no sense going into procedures. Never put two hands on the unit because you don't want to complete the path across your heart and um, just uh, 
you know, inadvertent defibrillation. But an exciting day. Um, it's been good to be in the uh, shop and getting back to work and getting one of my uh, uh, favorite units done. It's come a long way back from the day of that explosion. So let's uh, let's close it out today by listening to a little, uh, let's have a little listening experience here. Um, 1917, excuse me, <laughs> listen to me, 2017, 2018 when I got my first uh, Samsung Galaxy S9. I love the phone. Well, uh, Samsung's the kind of organization that hires a orchestra uh, to and some renowned composers to make up their own uh, music. It eventually becomes the ringtone for that year. And I thought so much of this tune, Over the Horizon, you've heard me use it tons of times on video it is great and it's hard to believe that it came from a smartphone android company and it is called over the horizon so let's uh let's close it out a little bit here and have that listening experience and uh, as usual thumbs up are appreciated everybody still a long way to go but a great deal of progress today <laughs>